Okay, what I'd like to do is show everyone how to mix a palette. The first thing I'm going to do is start out with my primary colors, red, uh, yellow, and blue. And then between those, I will make an orange, a purple, <clears throat> and a green. Um, the yellow, red, and blue that I'll start with is just anything that you want to find that is a very vibrant um, kind of medium color, nothing too dark, nothing too light, um, a cadmium red, cadmium yellow, uh, ultramarine blue, um, something like that. A cobalt blue would be okay, will be good colors to start with. <clears throat> then I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow and put it right where I've marked for orange and for green. Take a little bit of the red and put it again with the orange and with the purple, and then a little bit of the blue for the purple and the green. <clears throat> Take my knife and I'm gonna just mix those colors together. I do a lot of picking up the paint and putting it back down. And when I'm done, I can also pick up the paint and then put it in a spot on my palette that I prefer. I can move it to a corner if I need that to be out of the way of the middle. This helps me keep my palette very clean and um, allows me to have a surface where I can make sense of all the colors that I'm mixing. Some colors are stronger than others, so to make a medium green between blue and yellow is not equal one parts yellow, one parts blue. The blue is gonna be a lot stronger, so it really may be, the quantity of paint may be two to one, yellow to blue, but I want the value to be somewhere perfectly between yellow and blue. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow now and put it between the orange and the green so that I can make a yellow orange. This is a tertiary color. This is my third um, set of colors here. A yellow orange. I'm also going to make a, a red orange. So just a little bit of yellow, a little bit more red, and mix that together. Again, I'm kind of scraping and mushing the paint to mix the color and then I can scrape the paint, the glob all up together and move it to a new area. <clears throat> I'm running short on yellow here, so that's not a big deal. I can just grab a tube of yellow and squirt out some more paint. Just keep on going. Don't be shy about how much you paint you put on there. You don't need a giant glob, but go ahead and put as uh, much as you think you need. And if you need more, add a little bit. There's not a problem. And, um, and if you've mixed a big glob and you feel like it's too dark, separate it to start a new color to adjust from. Don't just continue to add paint and paint and paint until the glob is giant and you finally have the color you want. If you make it too dark, too much red in it, cut that little glob in half and then add the color that you want, add the blue to it to make an appropriate purple instead of just continuing to add more and more blue until you have a giant uh, color that takes up your whole palette. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do here is mix across the board, across the palette with um, colors on the opposite sides of the spectrum here. Um, the yellow orange and the yellow green are near each other but the green and the orange don't go well together. So this is gonna make a sort of a little bit more of a neutral color in between. Complementary colors, those are colors that are exactly opposite on the color wheel. They look good next to each other, they complement one another, but when mixed together, they take away the properties of the hue. So a red and a green together make a brown. And that's a good way to bring down a color if you think it's too vibrant. If you want to paint a sky and you use blue, but it's just so extremely blue, a thing you can do is add the complement, which is orange, add a little bit of the orange to it, and the it will still the color will still be blue. It will just not be so so vibrant. And that's a, a good little trick when painting. 